hello friends in this video we are going to be placing an image on a new background and secondly we are going to be looking at how we can professionally match the image color to that of the background this is twisted creative i remember my name it's your first time on this channel please do me a favor do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not just hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that i don't miss any of the next video without wasting much time let's get into it this is the image we are going to be using so as you can see the image has been removed from the background if you don't know how to remove image from background like there are some other tutorials about how you can remove image from background and there's still going to be more tutorials coming up on how to remove image from background so this is the image that you are going to be using and this is the background we have to drag the background and drop it on the image we have to spread it all the way up and down so as you can see the background has flow but for the now, based on the fact that the image is not a full image, so we have to take the top side of the background and let's go the downside. We have to hit OK. So we have to drag the background downwards to see the image on top. So we have to select both of them and use our Ctrl J to duplicate. We have to select the copy of the image and the copy of the background, then use our Ctrl G to place them in a group. The reason why I place them in a group is that we are going to be using it for before and after. We have to open up the group and everything we are going to be doing is going to be right inside the group. So we have to open up the group. Then we have to select the top layer which is the cut out image. Go to adjustment layer icon here and choose curves. Then before you start doing anything, make sure this icon is selected, this icon, this symbol of the curves is selected, not the layer marks. Make sure here is selected. You have to link the image by clicking on, clicking on this icon here to link the image to the curves. You can also hold your alt navigate in between the image and the curves. Then if you click, you notice that we'll see have that stuff here and you can also do it here. You have to make sure it is linked so that whatever you are going to be doing to the curves is going to be affecting just the image, not the background. If you take a look at this area, we have three eyedroppers here. We have one as black tip, then with the gray tip and the white tip. This white, gray and black is shadows, mid-tone and highlights. We have to double click the first one to bring out the shadow color picker. If you take a look at this stuff, now you notice that the eyedropper has been selected here. Then you have to make sure you set your sample size at 5x5 five five average pixel. So this is 5x5. Five five. You can set 11x11, 11 11, but 5x5 five five is okay. 3x3 three three is also okay, but 5x5 five five is ideal here. So let's take 5x5. Five five. Then the sample, you have to sample from current and below, not all layer. Then you have to make sure the sampling ring is shown. So you have to enable this. With this shadow selected, we have to go for the shadow on the background, darkest part of the background. Let's go in there and look for the darkest part of the background. Then we'll click on something like this. You notice that we we'll have the black green area. So let's say the darkest part should be somewhere here. Then we'll hit OK. Then it's going to ask you if you are saving this target as if saving this target color as default to say yes because if you don't save it as default color it's going to if anything goes wrong and you come back for readjustment it's going to take you back to the default photoshop color so we have to go down and we have to go to the next one and double click then we'll go to look for the mid-tone which is something like related to gray then it should be here and it can see it's okay close to gray and i think it's okay let's hit okay then it's going to ask you the same question if, if, you, if you are saving it as default color you say yes then you go to the last one which is the brightest part of the background then you look for the bright you look for the brightest part you can see somewhere very bright here then you we'll click on it the shadows the mid-tone and the highlights has been captured then the next thing you do is just for you to go to the image and click on the shadow mid-tone and highlight so we are going to start from the shadow then let's go to the darkest part of this image i think this spot this spot should be the darkest part of the image you have to click on it you can see the transformation if you take a look you notice that the background is a kind of greenish immediately you click on the shadows the image becomes greenish that will match the background let's go to the mid-tone 
the mid tone should be something grayish let's look for something grayish or let's say this part is a kind of uh, yes you can see it's matching then go to the next one which is the highlight and this should be a very bright spot of the image that is it so this is it let's see the before and after first let's see the before and after this is before this is after this is before this is after so this is matching the image to the background so if you take a look at the background the background is not looking good secondly this is portrait and normally if you are shooting portrait like this portrait is supposed to be separated from the background so we have to add depth of feed we are going to select the background then go to filter then block gallery then we have to use teeth shift for this middle point to this point is at zero blurriness then from this spot to this spot is also zero blurriness where the zero ended to this line is 15 pixel blurriness it's going to be 15 is going to be gradual it's going to be gradual it's not something that is going to be just pop up like that it's going to go gradual so we have to drag this stuff down let's zoom out then click on this spot and drag it downward then let's allow the line to be here so that the blurriness is going to start from the starting of the image the the background i'm going to increase the blurriness as you can see we are already on 15 15 pixels so we have to pick it up i don't want it to be that blur I just want it very light okay so we have it at 34 so we have to click ok for this for the background so we have blurred the background if you check you can see these areas are sharp we have to blur these edges we have to select the image then go to filter then go to blur gallery and this time we are going to be using feed blur so as you can see we have one spot here already then we have to take this spot to somewhere like this we go to the blur and take it to zero we are going to be creating other ones around the areas that we don't need to be that sharp so we have to do it outside the image if we click outside the image now you notice that we have blur edge there we can see adjust it by dragging it from this spot i think that stuff is enough we can make it six seven or eight let's say six should be okay then you can see go to this spot and drag this slider it's going to be the same thing so we are going to be using six or seven let's say seven we have to place another one somewhere around here close to the spot then we we'll reduce the blurriness reduce it to six yeah that area has been taken care of then we have to go to let's go to this this area it's not too blur but okay let's take it to six and it's okay then let's check again and see if there are sharp areas let's place one here then we we'll reduce the blurriness and i think it should be okay here by six then the body parts let's place one here then we we'll reduce the blurriness to to six or thereabouts i think six should be enough then it's okay then this area let's drag it down to six and it's okay this area let's do the same to six and okay then we we'll put one here let's take it to six and think one should be here take it to six i think should be okay let's take it to six then take a look let's click on this and readjust this we need to increase this to i think nine should be okay there are some other adjustments here you can add a bouquet light and whatever but that's not necessary for now then you have to click on ok so if you take a look at this image now you notice that all those sharp edges are gone and the image is okay on this background so let's check the before and after let's check the before and after so we have to disable this group to see the before so this is before it's not matching at all then this is after you can see how everything has blended in professionally 
So what we have to do now is that we have to edit this image and the background at the same time. We have to select the uppermost layer here inside the group. Then we are going to be holding our control down, hold shift down, hold alt down and click on E for stand visible layer. So we have this stand visible layer just like another image of its own but it's together with the background and all the adjustments that I've been doing. With that stand visible layer selected, we have to go to filter then camera raw filter so this is camera raw filter if you take a look at this image it's kind of yellowish greenish and there but let's let's bring it to let's remove let's tint it from green to magenta to see how it's going to look so it's going and i think it should be okay by here if you take a look at it the yellow is not that much you can bring down the temperature a bit like minus one should be okay minus one should be okay i think it's okay then we can see pump up the brightness and contrast contrast then maybe highlight highlight is okay then the shadows the shadows are okay and yeah let's let's just leave it this way i think it's okay let's hit okay and boom so this is the image this is the image it's a professional way of changing background and a professional way of matching your background to your image so this is let's see the before and after so this is before <laughs> this is before just like amateur then this is after just like professional shots if you take a look at this image now it's hard for you to detect if this image has been removed from background and placed on another background isn't that amazing okay let's see the before and after again let's see the before and after again this is before this is after this is before this is after amazing isn't that amazing i believe that is it for this video if you find it interesting helpful and useful let us know in the comment section telling us the area it has helped the area it has not and the area we need to improve on like i said earlier if you are new on this channel please do me a favor do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not just hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that i don't miss any of the next video and also like and share this video see you in the next one bye for now